Good luck. All right, this is an unscheduled teaching ladder game. So we are just going to play the same way as we would play a teaching ladder game. And play our best, and at our opponent's request, uh, do the best we can to help uh, learn and teach after the game. Oh, I've done this before. How does one counter this? <laughs> Damn, we are going to learn something today. Uh, well, I know that if I put my rook on the center file, things get dicey, so let's not. But at the same time, hmm, I was always curious about this. I think a proper response is advance one of my golds or my silver somewhere to deal with the central pressure. I think that's called for in this situation. Um, although, honestly, since... Well, no, if this pawn gets pushed, this bishop exchange could occur, so we might want the ability for the silver to move up here. So... Yeah, I think this is appropriate here. But I actually don't recall, because it's quite rare for me to find an opponent who plays this opening. Um, I could bring my bishop out also to defend this, um, but I'm not sure if that would be right either. Um, so let me just attempt to get our game into more ordinary waters before all hell breaks loose. That way, if the game is decided, it won't be the result of an early error. All right. Tell me you're not playing Anaguma. Tell me you're not playing Anaguma. Push this pawn <laughs> and we won't have any, okay. All right, you play a normal game. Um, that was exciting for a minute there. Um, hmm. We'll make this escape hatch. So we attempt to get something of a normal game going on here. Uh, right, they build half Mino Castle, which makes sense. So, there is a proverb of push the odd file pawns, and this is an odd file pawn. Um, but there's also a proverb about taking vanguard pawns. But I can't prevent this from advancing in front of their king. Um, I'm not quite in position to prevent that. So... So this is a bit of a quandary that I don't want to see them play like Silver Crown, even though they're not close to it. I mean, they shouldn't be pushing their castle, was the lesson that we learned earlier today. Is that pushing the castle can get you into a lot of trouble. Um, so, yeah, let's first free up our rook even though this temporarily does block our bishop from pulling some sort of attack on the edge. Um, hmm. They're aiming for the weak point at my rook's ear. Um, hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, they're protecting against this too. Well, we got a complicated position on our hands. Um, I will protect against this advancement, and I will vaguely threaten this and this. But I'm not entirely sure what I'm up to here. So our silver is still protecting our bishop in case something crazy does occur. Um... Hmm. 
We're going to try to escape our king. Understanding they might play a vanguard pawn on this side of the board. It's possible. Doesn't look easy to do. Um... This bishop is loose. I've done this before. Well, if I try something aggressive, they play their rook over. Uh, I push my pawn. I'm okay. I survive, and... Yeah, this looks... I don't know. I want to do this because their bishop is not defended right now. This is the best moment for me to try to press some kind of initiative. Um, if I wait one move, this silver could be anywhere. This gold could protect the bishop. They could potentially do something else with a free tempo. Um, the downside of pushing this is that my rook can no longer move through the pawn on this turn. Um, but moving the rook in front of my king seemed not to yield a benefit in any event. Uh, another possible downside is that I've created this hole in my camp, uh, so I need to be careful about which pieces I exchange. Maybe once per live stream I take a look at OBS just to make sure my board capture is correct, and this does look correct. So if you hear me hitting the keyboard, that's what that is. I'm just checking that I haven't done something terribly stupid. Uh, I would offer more commentary, except I'm really not sure, like for the past few moves I've been unsure what both players should be up to here. I wanted to push an attack on the left side of the board. My opponent frustrated my attack. Um, and then I thought about claiming a vanguard pawn, but my king was lounging about on... I forget if that's 6-4. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, 6-2. So I wanted to move my king closer to the corner. Now my king's on 7-1, so in case something does go horribly wrong, um, the only way I'm losing with my king on 7-1 is if there's a knight on 7-4. And uh, another piece, a general, on 8-2. Um, so I need to be wary of a knight exchange if I set up that very particular shape. I mean, yeah, there's other ways that the Mino castle could collapse in theory, but... Um, yeah, knight on 7-4, and general on 
is uh, one of the more common shapes against Mino Castle. I did schedule my tourney to master game. Um, hopefully it'll happen Wednesday afternoon. We'll see what we can do. All right, they defend their bishop. So now, you know, I, I should have thought more about this. In particular, do I want a bishop exchange? Or am I just interested in destroying that vanguard pawn on 5-5? Because five five? Um, it really feels right now as if all I wanted to do was destroy that pawn. And I didn't really have a further plan beyond that. Um, so, pawn takes, bishop takes. Rook 5-4, pinning the bishop to the rook. Bishop takes bishop, rook takes rook, bishop takes silver, uh, loses a piece. Alright, variation two, pawn takes, bishop takes, and then we exchange bishops. And then I bishop drop on a8, hitting the rook that's loose and hitting the lance that's also loose. Um, oh, then they block with the silver. Yeah, so better would be just bishop drop 4-4, four, four, asking them to move the rook, and then we take the lance and promote. Um, so, yeah, I think a bishop exchange, since it nets material, but then they trap my lance, or my bishop. Maybe that's not what we want. Um, anyway, I don't seem to have anything better than taking the 5-5 five, five pawn. Um, because they are threatening to take on 5-4. And that doesn't seem to lead anywhere positive. It's close, but I need a pawn in hand for that to be useful. If somehow I could, like, do a bishop exchange, but not do a bishop exchange. If I could have both worlds, then I could put a bishop here and target this or something. Um, but that ain't happening. So, uh, yeah, I seem to have just set up a bishop exchange, and then I could take a lance. They can trap this. I can take a knight, um, and they can build up an attack. Uh, hmm. Making more of my pieces loose is not a solution here. Um... Yeah, I need to take this, and as long as I'm taking it, and as long as I'm forced to exchange bishops either way, um, this seems like a sensible way about things. So they're eventually threatening a bishop drop here, hitting the rook and the pawn behind. Um, but this could be too committal. Like, if I successfully protect this square, then what's this bishop going to do? So, that's interesting. If I exchange bishops and then I drop a bishop here... If I force them to exchange, my silver gets stronger. Um, but then they have this forking my gold and this pawn. Wait, do they always have this? Oh, this. So that's a bit scary. Um, so I'm debating, do I take or do I drop a pawn on 5-4? Or 5-3, but 5-3 is sad. Um, no, 5-3, they just get to bishop drop and then take your next um, so I need to take that uh, 
I think this lance in the corner is a red herring. But yes, I need to do this. But no, I don't want the rest of like claiming a silver, etc. I want to take a vanguard pawn and continue attacking on this side of the board. And forget the lance unless like I'm absolutely safe. And I'm not sure that I am. <laughs> um I could also pawn drop by four. Their rook moves. I could do this drop here. Again, it's just not great. Um, hmm. Interesting. Maybe it's not so bad. Rook takes pawn five four. Bishop here. Pawn takes rook. Bishop takes rook. Um, and then with this bishop here, I could trap the bishop with a rook drop. So yeah, the lance here is a red herring. I don't really want it right now. I want the freedom to put my bishop anywhere. Um, oh, this is tricky. At least it feels tricky. Because, like, if I attack their rook, eventually they're going to bishop drop me here. I really want that 5-5 vanguard pawn. I could be crazy. Um. Hmm. So, do I drop this pawn? I mean, having a pawn in hand is nice, too. If I drop this, they move the rook away, we take this, but, like, they trapped the horse, and it's, it's just a tough position. Well, then, yeah, no, it's, there's no way that that's an easy position. Uh, wait, if I put this here, eventually they bishop drop, eventually they take here. So what am I gaining with this pawn drop? Nothing. Do I want to bishop drop here? They pin my bishop to my rook. I unpin my rook. And free myself to put bishops wherever. Maybe. Probably not. Um, well, we took away the Vanguard pawn. I don't know what to do next. I think I have too many weaknesses here, and the only way to cover them all is with this move. Sounds like rain in the background. So yeah, this rook moves somewhere. Alternatively, they drop a bishop hitting my rook. We could consider a rook exchange. And then their bishop here is trapped and I drop a rook here. They could maybe drop a rook somewhere to save it. Probably, though it's not savable. But yeah, my rook here is loose. We've got a really sharp position. Just need to read carefully. Yeah, the other thing that briefly crossed my mind is, well, can I just bring the rook over here and start attacking stuff? No. Bad idea. Don't do that. No. Now, this is the correct diagonal. We wanted to take this back. 
We also want to prevent them from dropping a bishop, but we just can't. That's nothing we can control. So we accept that we take the longest diagonal on the board, but we're going to come under attack soon. Um, and we'll survive it somehow. We have to. Um, if they bring up the rook, I could consider bringing up the silver. And then pawn drop 5-5 five five and bring up the silver again and force a rook for bishop exchange. Um, alternatively, bring the rook over one and that like gets me out of most of these fork threats. But yeah, one other thing I observed is that they're threatening rook takes pawn if I'm careless. So rook takes, and then they would pin my rook to my king. And I could unpin it with my own bishop, but the key point is that if I were to start this whole combination with pawn drop, they take here, I take, they pin. Wait, that's a rook sacrifice. Breaking the pin is sufficient. Um, Yeah. I was just panicking, really. And I'm trying to justify it. Anyway, if this rook retreats, they still have the bishop drop here threat. So either I have to move the silver up to protect the square, or move the silver up here to protect this pawn or some other way protect stuff, but also they're threatening a pawn drop on the center file, so really I need to just take the vanguard pawn myself if their rook retreats. Um, and as great as the vanguard pawn is, they're threatening 1, 2, 3, hitting my uh, rook and bishop. So I need to be prepared for that eventuality too. Um, See, so yeah, I'm imagining the rook retreats. I take a vanguard pawn so that this stops them from taking a vanguard pawn themselves. Um, also stops this tactic back here. They do something about my attack on the lance, and I try to propel an attack toward the king as quickly as I can, but it doesn't look easy. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, this silver advance is countered by me bringing out the knight in one move. Okay. Um, I was already considering pawn drop 5-5. Five five. Um. Hmm. I am doing pawn drop 5-5. Five five. So yeah, that does block my bishop. But this strategy of having a pawn on the fifth row has advantages as well as disadvantages. So unless like there's some crazy tactic I've just completely whiffed on, um, then this looks okay. I saw if they bring the rook over, I could one, offer a rook exchange, which might not be bright, but two, I could use the silver to protect this point instead. Uh, they counter with a bishop, and then we're forced to move our rook somewhere. Um, hmm. Also, three ignoring it <laughs> might be an option. 
They well no, my rook is so loose. I cannot afford this to just let this drop for nothing. Um yeah, so if they bring over the rook, I could consider a rook exchange. Um, they have both a rook and a bishop in hand in that case, which is a bit spooky. Uh, also considering just bring up my silver somewhere. Um, and then if they force it, well, hang on. Oh! Um, okay, there's another option. Um... Mm hmm. Hmm. So this silver is not going to move through the rook to this square. I've protected against... Uh, I mean, this bishop fork is not super scary, but I defend against it anyway. Uh, because I don't really know even what I'm missing. So I'm trying to have my pieces defend each other. Next up is probably king eight two. Although I should attack, I want to attack, but I'm just concerned with everything being very loose here. Like, my king feels a bit exposed. Their rook is not on this file, so... I mean, they could change that pretty quickly. So maybe this is the safer place, but this feels more prone to a bishop or some kind of attack hitting the center. So 8-2 might be a better home for the king. Alright, uh, should we complete Ishida the hard way? Um, this, I mean, it's a good shape. It's a very good shape. Uh, it makes me nervous, because, like, surely they know I'm building the shape. Um... Having the knight advanced is a good protective measure, or defensive measure, but I'm not sure that it gains any profit. Oh, 
so what to do All right, so we built this shape. We finally do it. I think this is better than other things I could spend this tempo on. Um, like, it, I could consider bringing the silver somewhere else. I could consider pushing the second file pawn. None of these things seem quite as good as just bringing the knight out, where the knight is protected by the rook, and the knight protects the ear of the rook. They still have a bishop in hand. I'm expecting this pawn to advance. I'm not going to be happy about it. As expected. All right. Um, <clears throat> so... So if I bring my king up... I'm asking for trouble because um, they're going to attack strongly. My king is safer back here, in fact. So I just want to push this pawn and collect the lance. And then if they pawn drop winning my gold, I lance drop winning their uh, silver. Um, that seems to be the idea. I don't like it. But if I don't do this now, then the rook makes its way over and joins the attack. And then they could do silver takes instead here. Here, if they do silver takes, their rook is on the wrong side of the board. So this is the right moment, if there is a moment, to play that. Their rook cuts off my attack over here and here. So. But this does empower me to take this lance. Clever. That's resourceful. Um, well, no lance for me yet. Um, Sanjubio. Yonju 
I couldn't read out fast enough. Well, no, I'm sorry. I missed very simply. Uh, bishop takes. Wait, no, rook takes. It's not possible. I was trying to read bishop takes, pawn takes, silver drop, rook over, pawn up. Uh, I was assuming somehow their rook does escape or my attack fails, so this sacrifice of bishop for silver is not worth it. Um, so we need to go with a more obvious approach that just spends a tempo and brings their silver back toward their castle, but I can still take the lance. So we're going to take the lance, but then what? Probably drop it on the center file? Um, maybe bring my rook over in front of my king, despite repeatedly saying what a bad idea that is. Because... Their rook is preventing my attack, and the silver is misplaced, so yeah, it seems I have to attack where I can, which seems to be the center. Um, if they offer a bishop exchange, do I decline and take this knight? Probably. No, if we if they offer a bishop exchange, and if we were to exchange, so we could fork, the rook could protect the knight, and that would be unwise. So yeah, declining, or rather accepting it, is not immediately profitable. Um, unless there's some trick here. No. Bishop exchange on 7-7 seven, seven does not immediately profit. See, so, yeah, taking the knight seems common sense, but um, doesn't hurt to validate things when we have time to validate. All right. Free move. What the hell do I do with the free move? I don't know. I'm not used to it. <laughs> At least not right now. I'm not used to it. Our opponent is playing uh, strongly. They're trying to trap my horse. Um, they're very close to succeeding in trapping it. I am unconcerned. My horse is safe. Or if I've misread something, I'm okay with surrendering a horse due to my misreading. But yeah, if they try to bring this gold over, I can actually drop the knight to hit the rook. If the rook continues to protect the gold, then we could drop the lance to hit the rook. And they will take the lance and uh, the horse. And they'll have a gold in the corner, doing absolutely nothing. That's one way this could continue. Uh, another option would be if they attack, I just run this way. And I read out Rook back, and I thought the Rook moved like a dragon and protected this. But it doesn't. So, um, yeah, this... Escaping this way seems okay, too. But they don't want to move this gold away from their castle, so... Okay. Interesting. The bishop finally makes its arrival. It's protected by a silver and by a rook. Um... Hmm. It blocks the rook across the row. 
my rook is not protected. There are a couple problems with this bishop drop. This silver is loose. This bishop and rook are assembled into this shape that can be forked by a knight. This pawn is protected by the bishop. So maybe that's part of the purpose for this bishop drop is to defend said pawn. Maybe. But also, like, if I sacrifice the rook here, then I could take the pawn and continue attacking however I want to attack. So if they, like, bring this gold over, uh, we could see some fireworks. But also fireworks seem unnecessary because this bishop's protected by the two pieces that really want to move, but can't. Um, and the bishop can't move because this can't move. So, like, they've got a whole cluster of pieces that all want to move but cannot move right now. Um... That makes sense. That's intelligent. Yeah. So I've been forever paranoid this game. What if um, their rook makes it back to the center file? What if they find some way to attack down the center? Um, turns out they're finding an attack. So I could take this, but this would make life easier for them. Instead... Um, yeah, let's put the rook on greener pastures here. So their bishop is trapped. There's also a fork. So... Um... I'm trying to threaten this pawn, but more importantly, I'm trying to trap the bishop. And trying, I think, is the wrong word, because if they defend against my rook promotion threat, then we actually do trap the bishop. Um, So yes, I could have moved the knight here as well, um, which would have saved a tempo with some future attack. Um, but at present, I'm concerned about this present attack. Possibly the knight drop here was better. Um, given more Byoyomi time, I would spend thinking more time, or spend more time thinking about like. If the snipe drop here is better, we would prefer it. But since we got 60 second Bioyomi, uh, I'm just going to roll with it. Uh, I expect Rook over. Okay, that's not Rook over. Um... That's aggressive. Definitely is an aggressive play. Um, yes. 
Oh, I see. They're freeing their rook against a perceived trap of some sort. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just take his horse. Now their rook runs free for a bit. Um... And we're going to free up our pieces somehow. So I want to bring this horse back into the game. I want to promote this deal? rook. These ambitions are actually not super easy to achieve. They've got a decently Don't strong castle. Deal? It's just that their attack is gone at this point. Um. And I could chase the rook around all day, but um, I want to try to play accurately and actively here. So, Dropping the lance just because it's an aggressive macho move doesn't necessarily look right. Um, Alright, they have pawns on all nine files. So they can't, like, drop anything unexpectedly on my side of the board unless I exchange pieces. So, I should know exactly what's going to attack me before it attacks me, because it's whatever I give my opponent. Right now, the only thing they can capture is a pawn. So if I just go back and reorganize my pieces, and I'm careful not to give away too much material, um, this should be a winning position as long as I don't Nifu. Um, so I expect gold up or gold up here, and I can bring the horse all the way back here. That's one option. Um, kind of like this option. Giving me time to regroup and figure out what the hell I'm doing. Um, another option would just be take this gold general over here, live by the sword, die by the sword, sort of, just like, let's go, and say this is the right moment for the right attack. But is that the right attack? I don't, don't think so. My rook is not participating yet, so I should be more patient. Um... Yeah, we're just gonna go back. It's okay. No need to like pull some miracle attack when we could just play patiently. I think next pawn drop here. Uh oh, right. So the head of this knight is vulnerable. So they could drop a pawn and win this knight. Um But the knight does support this square, so if they do win a knight, uh, I could win a silver. Beyond winning a silver, uh, I want to activate my rook. Hmm. All right. So we're going to remove the silver and then follow up by bringing this knight, hit this gold, and then drop a silver here and just 
continue harassing this rook until it moves off of the fourth rank or sixth rank. Once it's moved off the sixth rank, then we can advance this and we'll be cooking with gas. Um, not sure if there's any trick in the interim where somehow I could just collect the rook. Um, if they take the knight, I could try to promote this, but hmm, I wonder how smart is that? Oh, uh oh, <laughs> uh oh, um, I don't think that was fully considered. That's interesting. I'll give them credit for finding an interesting move here. Um, hmm. Hmm. All right, I'm feeling a bit gutsy at the moment. Feeling just a bit gutsy. Um, let's play with fire. So, I bring my rook out. My knight is loose. A lot of things are all simultaneously loose here. Um... But I have a bishop in hand, and I have a clear target here. So we can strike this. If this gold advances, we could try to bring the rook to the second row and promote it. If this gold does not advance, but they like bring back the silver, we could bring the rook to the first rank. Um, in either case, promoting it. So they've got two awesome generals who are giving it their all, but this is not the right place for a general. Hmm. Um... Oh, right. I see what I can do. Well, no. It's not super obvious. Okay, we're going to promote on the first rank. All that indecision was about which rank, or the top rank, the ninth rank. We're going to promote up here. Um, it's the more natural move anyway. But, yeah, here I don't have a specific tactical justification for that. It just feels like the right thing to do. Um, oh, I said I didn't have a tactical justification. Um, it's true. <sighs> wow. So many ideas here. What to do? I'm not sure if this is wise. 
or if I had a better bishop drop available. I read and I read and I read and this is the best I find. So I think it will do. But yeah, it'd be nice to find something that were just absolutely decisive. I just did not find any such thing. So we approach patiently. Uh, if I had dropped a lance here, they just moved this gold sideways and I didn't see an exploit, so... Hmm. Okay. That's a thing. Um... Hmm. I think they missed the mark just a bit on this one. All right, what have I missed? If I'm not finding it in 10 seconds, if I'm not finding it in 30 seconds, I'm just not going to find it here. But, um, yeah, is there some tactic that, like, justifies hanging the knight? I think this is just a attack in the hope that I would just forget about the silver and just continue attacking. Which, I admit, for 20 seconds, uh, I consider just... Bishop takes, bishop takes, bishop takes. I kept looking at that. I did idly think about this, and then I realized, well, this actually seems very strong. So, yeah. Let's do this. Right. There's a token in my face. Um... So normally, gold diagonal move would be a bad shape. This is a bad shape, but, again, tactics justify it. Um, I could, again, just retreat the bishop. But at this point, my position is so dominant that I could do a lot of things. Um, one of them is transition to my castle to this ugly bad misformed shape that just seems to hold on um if they drop a pawn i don't have to take well even if i take the silver's not going to be able to advance on me but if they drop a pawn here i could just retreat and collect my shape again That makes sense. Fighting back. Um... Alright, tactically speaking, 
again, same excuses, same outcome. Um, next up is Tokien War 8. Uh, okay. That's possible too. So now they have the rook. All right, we're just going to sacrifice the house here. Because I think I have everything under control. I hope I am correct. What I'm debating now is like this token is very powerful. Um, and am I going to follow with a rook check here? Or do I have something else? I'm pretty sure rook check is best. They have to block with something. And I can take whatever blocks. Uh, ideally, I would drop the rook on the back rank and force them to defend this. Actually, they can't. Yeah, if they... Uh, my mind is melting trying to figure this out. What the difference is between the two rook drops. Um, it's possible both of them are wrong and maybe gold here might be best. Alright, we do this check. Um... This is loose, which is unsettling for sure. But uh, they need to block the check. So probably they block with the pawn here, and probably I do token takes. Unless I have a mate with some other, like, rook takes, but I don't think rook takes mates. Oh dear. Well, it was a very exciting game, that's for sure. Um, yeah. Thanks, uh, that was very exciting. Ah. Alright. Nicely played.
That's, yeah, Shogi's a tough game. Yoyomi is brutal. Uh, that's for sure. It happens to the best of us. Um, uh, yep. Yep, so we got the live stream going. As we tend to do. Uh, yes, yeah, so they ask, do you mind if I hop over there? I say, uh, unambiguously go for it. Because, like, yeah, I could type a longer sentence saying, yes, please, that's okay. Um, yeah, I don't know how easy or ideal it is to have, like, if I could, I would chat through Twitch. And if I could, we chat through Twitch while I'm also, um, sharing the sports so other people could see it. But it's not entirely your call how we choose to proceed here. Um, yeah, uh, Byoyomi's rough. I've misread things in Byoyomi before, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, let me check out, like, what's our plan here? How do we intend to do this? Oh, okay, Rita, too, intends to join us. That's exciting. Yep, the more the merrier. I suppose I could turn off the no backseating warning at this point, because, uh, the competition part of this has ended, and now we all learn together. Hello, hello, welcome. Yeah, this is tricky. You had me, uh, I kept myself very confused in the opening. You played some very sharp opening moves. Uh, possibly engines might be able to speak stronger about that particular phase. It's hard to, uh, no thanks. We've talked about that. That's okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So yeah. Um, yeah, this opening phase we had in the game also uh you've got the hat so you could feel free to drive the analysis unless you want to like hit the hat button i could drive it i don't care either way um <laughs> no i've uh i've certainly played things out till mate um i certainly have played chess games in even real life tournament situations where i would get positions that were very painful um, and only toward the end realize what an utter hell the position is, and continue playing on anyway, because my teammates needed me to continue playing, but, um, yeah, it can be unsettling to get a difficult position. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, I, I kind of like this idea. It's probably worth checking this. I'm not the greatest opening theoretician ever. Uh, so, like, check this with anybody but me or any database or engine or something. I like this idea. I've tried it before. Uh, engines, in my experience, seem to recommend just open up the bishop too while you're at it. Unless you're really considering playing this Orochino style thing. In which case this diagonal remains closed. But if you're not going to play this particular style, um, then opening up the bishop sometimes could be quite useful. This opening is very sharp, but um, I think this is fine. I'm just saying, uh, like, unless you've really studied this Orochino strategy, or uh, if you're not really seriously considering playing that, uh, opening the bishop diagonal can allow some very nice tactics from time to time against an opponent who may or may not have seen this central rook so many times before. But yeah, I like this. Um, it certainly had me thinking. Um... So, okay. Yeah, I was unsure about my silver move here. Like, in general, I know I want to play Bino Castle. I know I want my king in the corner somehow. But, um, at least I think I know that. I wasn't completely sure because I wasn't fully sure how you were attacking. So, I built this part of half Mino first. 
I uh, was partly rattled by my game earlier today against our five Don friend, uh, where I had prematurely stuck my king in over here, and their rook ended up like right on my head. And it was extremely painful. So this time I'm like, okay, you know, I'm just going to put my king back here. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if my move order is right. Probably at some point I should have been playing this edge pawn. But there is a lot going on in this opening. Openings are hard. But yeah, so since you're not playing the Anaguma strategy, um, it makes sense to push this. Otherwise, you're not going to get a chance to push it. Alternatively, <laughs> I don't really know. Does Central File Rook work with Anaguma strategy? Like, this, uh, other folks in our chat probably have some idea, but I would be quaking in my boots here. Is either color. I really don't know. Um, this feels interesting to me. Uh, I think I've tried it before, but yeah. It's very tempting to build Anaguma, and then we've got a whole nother lecture. We're going to have whatever. We're just going to be sitting there the whole time thinking about, well, is Anaguma a good or a bad strategy? Uh, but yes, yeah, so I did this to try to provoke uh, this edge pawn push to discourage Anaguma Castle. So you built half Mino, which is good. And I start... Um, yeah, this is interesting, this Rook Advance. This prevents me from pushing this pawn, which I'm getting the sense, after having pushed this pawn early on numerous occasions, that in this particular situation... It's not profitable for me to push it. Um, so I'm not really sure like if this is response or a, a good idea here. Uh, bringing up the rook does prevent me from pushing the pawn, but um, I've tried pushing this before and it's always backfired. Um, it's always been more useful for me to have this as a vanguard pawn on this third file. But this is some subtle opening nuance that uh, we don't need to worry too much about. So, yeah, I return the favor, bring my rook out. This is possibly unwise, because I could not find moves in the future. I was afraid of this advance, which... Um, yeah, they say there's... Um, what's it? There's nothing to fear but fear itself. Uh, Winston Churchill. Uh, yeah, this, I'm being afraid of this thing, which, this pawn advance doesn't make sense. It's not going to happen anytime soon, but I was panicking over this and thinking, well, if I lift the rook, I could bring out the knight, and I could play this shape, and it could be okay. Um, so that's what I was thinking about. Uh, I was also considering maybe I bring the bishop out in front and then bring the knight out, so... All this looks fine in some way, but really, this Rick advance seems like a... Oh, I'm sorry, I was worried about this dropping. That's right, I forgot about that. Oh, uh, catch you later, Railbird. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I was afraid of this dropping. Um, should I have been? I don't even know. We have segued into... Some kind of shogi that I just don't know. Maybe this is playable, because, like, hypothetically, if you do this, I could bring that up. And uh, before this silver makes it here, I could shut down the silver attack. Um, hypothetically, maybe I have time for something like this. Um, but probably a best use of my time would be this, assuming that this does not destroy me, and I don't know if it does or not. <laughs> if it destroys me, I'm in trouble, but possibly I'm okay here. I don't know. Like, you promote, I offer an exchange. Actually, I think I've seen this before. Um, and I think I'm surviving this, but I don't know. <laughs> um... 
So, yeah, anyway, I was concerned about this rook over attacking this. And it's possible King 7-1 C- King could be correct, and maybe I just defend like this. And just awaken the beast and hope that I'm okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this is some really specialized opening strategy stuff that I just need to study more. Or I could play cowardly moves like I did in the game, where I just brought my rook out and said, you know, enough of this. If they bring this over, I could either push or trade or defend this. And this didn't seem like a bad square for the rook. It's just inflexible. And my king wants to be in the corner. So, um, yeah, you bring out your bishop, which is good. That's great. You've uh, brought out the bishop. Here, I pounced as soon as the silver abandoned defense of the bishop. Was it right for me to pounce? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, so I would have maybe considered one more patient move. And I don't know as Senta what I would play here. Like... Yeah, there are many targets. I think ultimately I would play this asking, what are you going to do? And you would play something asking, what am I going to do? And we'd go back and forth a bit, because neither one of us wants to break the silver bishop chain. Um, so this is awkward. I think, yeah, you play here. Um, what would I do in response to this? Um, I'm not sure. I guess I'd play here, taking a vanguard pawn. Um, I don't know. <laughs> this is unclear to me. Like, we keep, uh, we could continue playing a lot of delaying tactic sort of moves. Um, but as soon as one of us breaks this, uh, then this 5-5 five five becomes vulnerable. Um, so potentially you might have to do this to defend the gold, or potentially or bishop, or maybe this has to climb up here. I don't know. This is like super sharp stuff. Um, oh yeah, it was tempting to push the pawn. Yeah, now that's interesting. My king is, like, right next to the center, right? So I ran away, because I... Yeah, you're right, this is actually quite scary. Um... So... Oof. Like you saying, the timing doesn't feel right. One sample variation would be takes, 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 and then this... And I've got to, like, defend this pawn. Um, and then stuff gets exchanged. Um, and we take, we take, go somewhere, I don't know. It's complicated. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, here I have bishop uh, in hand. Assuming this bishop drop is even right, and this might be wrong. Um, so I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, this vanguard pawn is just a really strong shape that helps you build up a solid attack on this side of the board. Knowing that there's really nothing I can do to break the board on this side, so you just are able to attack it freely as quickly as you want. Um... So for you to attack, obviously, you have to be able to move the generals, but, um, yeah, this serves as a useful way to split the board in half and threaten to push this pawn at some decisive moment. And so I'm being very careful to always leave my bishop defended here, because if this pawn push comes and my bishop's hanging, that's bad news for me. I have to always be prepared to take the pawn if it advances, or have some uh, plan for what to do if, like, I exchange bishops and you take here instead, my king is exposed. Yeah, so this 
center pawn is very powerful. Um, yeah, it's this is a complicated strategy. Um, Shogi Harbor does play Nakabisha central foul rook, so definitely she believes in it. I played uh, the strategy quite a bit on Shogi Wars because, well, got tired of playing all the other openings and meeting opponents who are familiar with it all, so I wanted to play something different. And it turns out opponents on Shogi Wars have not studied this as much as they studied other openings. Um, yeah, so we get this... Okay, so yeah, I took this moment to exploit this pin. And this, we've just descended into some kind of very confusing position. Like, this is loose. I don't know what's going on. So this is one option. I think I block here. And yeah, so this is, because this is not decisive and you don't have anything to drop, um, you can't force a silver exchange here. Instead, um, yeah, what you did seemed as reasonable as anything else. But the minute you defend your this bishop, I'm going to take this. So it all comes down to whether or not this combination works. And if this combination didn't work, then silver 6-8 uh, is wrong. Like, if after silver 6-8, if you're not prepared for this, silver 6-8 is wrong. Uh, central foul rook is just one of those sorts of openings where either it's good or it's bad and um, it's on a knife edge so yeah you have there you have to play it very accurately <laughs> um so i think perhaps just as a strategy it made more sense to spend some time pushing this stuff and i guess if you got tired of having this pin here um i don't know there might be some way to activate uh, the bishop without losing material. And you might be able to attack this. But probably in an ideal world, you'd have a very strong attack going on this side of the board. And again, I'd be pretty scared of what's going on. Um, but yeah, silver 6-8 seems to just give up the vanguard pawn. And then this loses a tempo. And forces me to execute this combination and prove that I wasn't just bluffing. And was I bluffing? Well, yes, a little bit. But, like, if I don't play this pawn up, I'm in not a very good situation. If I could just, if I allowed you to just freely bring the silver out, or whatever it is that you're planning on doing next here, um, if I just freely allow this to happen then I am just surrendering this game. Um, your rook controls all these squares, so I have to fight back somehow. And the only way I saw to fight back was to play this. So you kind of forced my hand and forced me to play something you didn't want to see. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've done this before. Uh, happened. It's just unfortunate when you're playing central foul rook if you have floating pieces like the bishop's floating this is floating, the gold here is floating um, this is only protected by the bishop like uh, this here is floating uh, at some point when I see all this stuff here I'm like you know I think I'm going to take my chances on this um, because I've connected these pieces together. I've connected Mino Castle. So I'm kind of forced to attack now. I'm not going to have a better opportunity, even though my rook here is floating, which really spooked me about doing this attack. I, this is not, like, my ideal window for attack. But it's not going to get any better, so I'm forced to do this. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is as sensible as anything, but if we really think that, like, 
I don't know, if we expect that this combination is going to work for me, then you would have not... Yeah. I'm trying to square the cognitive dissonance that is in my own head here. Where I'm trying to say, okay, it's fine to play Silver 6-8, knowing that this might not work. But once we're in this position, and we start to think, oh crap, did I just screw up? Um, this further compounds the mistake. Uh, this forces me to execute the combination. Uh, yeah, so that's an interesting point, right. I had even been thinking about this. I'm not even saying this is necessarily the right way about it, but this is another option. Um, I think this does also fail, which also further justifies my pawn advance, but yeah, this is an alternative. Um, so this is one other way this could go. Um, I guess what I've not said so far is, okay, so let's say... Um, let's say that I'm going to take here on 5-5 five, five next. Say that, you know, I've just decided I really want to take a pawn. Um, what can we do just giving, uh, go to a free tempo, or send to a free tempo here? Well, let's just build Mino, right? Or let's just, I don't know, take another Vanguard pawn. Or, um apply some pressure that might be useful to checkmate my king in the endgame. That might be an option. Um, I get that it's scary that if bishops are going to get exchanged, you don't want to give me a place to drop my bishop. I get that. Uh, I'm just questioning, like, yeah, this is useful if you believe that silver 6-8 is correct. If you're 100% convinced that's right, but if you're having any doubts and thinking, well, Toad might take this pawn anyway, um, if you're thinking that, then maybe hedge your bets a bit. Um, I don't know. It's a personal preference thing. Uh, and it leads to some... Like, if you're playing, like I suggest, with this personal preference of I'm just going to hedge my bets and I don't really understand, you will get some free rating points this way, because occasionally hedging your bets, um, you will survive a little bit better. But also, climbing up the rating ladder is daunting. Um, so yeah, we could end up with the same position, right? Except now you have a gold general... Um, on the center of the board, which is different because now you can't actually drop the rook back. So there's pluses and minuses to all of this. Um, so the plus is that you built the Mino castle, which is very solidly connected. The minus is that the rook is still floating, so it's still going to take some time to attack. So that's one option is building that. It's perhaps not the right way to spend a move. Um, another more generally usually works if you just push this and um again there's pluses and minuses to all this but the plus here is that this attack is one move faster so um yeah i had during the game been starting to look at this i'm like oh i could take this lance and then well this gets really complicated because now, with my horse out of the action, you're threatening, like, bishop 5-5, five five, bishop here, pawn drop somewhere around here. Like, there's a lot of stuff I have to worry about. Um, so I've been looking at this and thinking, well, also, you're probably bringing the rook over here or there or something. And I wasn't sure if I was even going to take this lance. Um, but I had to call your bluff. So... Sorry about all this, but it's a long-winded way to say, like, this loses a tempo. So there's just a lot of other possibilities. Obviously, it's a timed game. We can't think of everything during the game, but the way it played out, you just lose a tempo that you could have spent, like, pushing this or this or this or something. I don't know. Um, instead, you force me to play this, and I think it... 
Yeah, at this point, I'd still been considering, can I get away with this? I don't think I can. So I think what I did was reasonable. Uh, here, I expected either the rook to go completely back or over here. Since this is a weakness, and since if the rook goes back, um, it could come out stronger on the other side um, somehow. Uh, this is the rook all the way retreated back, brings the rook to safety. This is a common central rook idea that I was not aware of when I first started playing central fa rook. So um, that's one idea, but your novel strategy of bringing the rook to protect the row also looks interesting. So yeah, there's possibilities here. Um, the reason I'm one down is because I can list the possibilities, but I don't really know how to evaluate them that well just yet. Um, is 2-3 really a weakness? Oh, um, okay, yeah, so that's good inquiry. Right, and you're right that here I'm set up that I could actually just push and push again, so at this point is it a weakness still? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It looks kind of weak to me. Um... I don't know. I'm not even joking around at this point. Like, this is just complicated. So I made it to one down by finding possibilities, but I don't know how to evaluate this. Um, so I keep guessing, but I'm not completely sure if this is weak. Um, I don't know. It might be... It, or it could be that I survive this somehow, and if I do survive, then I'm very strong off here. This is a little over my head. Um, yeah, I'm, even here, I'm trying to figure out, like, what could I try? Um, maybe it's a bit too early to push that. Maybe I have to, like, go across here or something, or... Okay, yeah, it is definitely scary. There's a lot to consider. So, just given the time situation... Um... Yeah, this is one possibility. This is another one? It's scary. I don't know. It, it could be okay. Because, like... I still control this diagonal, I have the vanguard pawn. I could push this and take the lance at some point. I might have a very strong counterattack. I'm not sure. So, it's a legitimate question. Um, but yeah, it's tricky. Oh, I'm sorry, the reason I know that this is something to be concerned about is because um, our good friend Team Flute, not Destiny, um, at one point, I think he had smashed me on this point two three in some other opening where I just failed to bring my pieces out in a smart way. And so, like, I've been crushed a few times um, along this diagonal, and I forget if it was Destiny or somebody else, but, like, yeah, I've had some very painful losses where stuff falls on this side of the board, and I just don't recover. Um, and if you go watch videos on YouTube talking about opening theory, they'll point out, oh yeah, just like bring the rook back and it's fine, because you know, they promote here, but you get a counterattack. Like, sometimes that works, sometimes, it, at least in the videos it works, but it depends on which line you're playing. Uh, but yeah, so that's why I was afraid of this. Even though I could just directly push it. Here, this rook does threaten to take the bishop. Um, but then I can take back with the rook and my rook's defended. So, um, yeah. This rook seems to be, other than the fact that it can exchange itself for the bishop, um, this might be a misplaced rook. The candidates I was looking at were here, 
and back here. Um, and if this pawn had been up one more square, then we would consider just like tucking the rook behind the pawn. But uh, not possible here. So the rook showed up here, and I started to calm down and realized that, okay, I've defended against every bishop drop. And having defended against all the bishop drops, now I can start to uh, take some territory and make sure I'm safely castled and, you know, just play good shogi at this point. I'm not sure if this knight up is a good idea. There's a lot about this that I did not know. Um, so what was it about this pawn move that had me concerned? Oh, right, so you're going to take some time bring the rook over this way. Um, maybe play this up first. I don't know. Uh, the reason I keep suggesting, or I'm starting to suggest rook to the 8th file is because this is only defended once. So this tends to be a target. Sometimes you're fortunate enough to be able to break the square directly. Sometimes you're fortunate enough to be able to break the base of the castle here with a rook while attacking over here. Uh, so like on the Mino castle, the weak points are the base and um, this point. So that's why I keep thinking that this rook is going to come over here. And look, I'm trying to do the same thing, where I bring the rook over and push this. And you keep frustrating my plans because your rook is protecting this row, whereas I brought out a bishop that's preventing my rook from doing the same thing. So that's why I felt it necessary for me to react instead of allowing this rook over on this side and this to keep advancing. I had to say enough is enough and just dive in head first and this was good this um i didn't expect but it seems very clever um so maybe i have a tactical shot here i don't know it'd be something if this tactical shot actually works um it's a bit hard for me to read. I think this is what I needed to do, even though this gives you both bishops. And that's pretty scary to me at a time where I don't have a lot of pieces. Um, I had started to try to read this out and try to figure out what the hell's going on. Um, so we trap the rook. Um, take here and promote. Uh, I take the horse. The rook escapes. And I attack this or something. I don't know. So I thought briefly about this. Couldn't find a way to make it easily work. So instead, yeah, it looks like this silver advance just blocks my bishop. My bishop blocks my rook from defending the rank. So, yeah, at this point, I was kind of upset I didn't see this move. It's very clever. Uh, yeah. So what did I do here? Oh, right. I promote. Some ideas. I'm going to attack the silver from behind. Um, yeah, this is a messy position. Which says to me that I've missed something earlier. Um, yeah, so you take here, I take here. Um, this seems as reasonable as anything, because now that pieces are exchanging very rapidly, you want to have your attack succeed as quickly as possible here. That said, you have two pieces attacking, so the chances of this attack working would be greatly increased if you could get more pieces into the attack. It's just not possible. Also, my rook is actually defending here, so why was I panicking? I don't know. Okay, yeah, taking the knight is the correct reaction for me. Even though it allows this bishop drop. Here, what did I do? I moved my rook. 
Should I have done that? I was so proud of my move. It doesn't look right, though. Because my rook's still floating. I don't need to play my rook there. Um, a floating rook is not what I need right now. So, yeah, I'm not sure tactically what's best. I think this might be okay. With an idea being that it's just difficult to defend against at this point while also trying to hit my horse. Wait, did I miss something back here? Okay, no, I don't have a horse drop because I don't, or I don't have a knight drop because I don't have a knight. Um, but my rook is still floating. Like, unfloating my rook should be a higher priority than just capturing a knight. I should know better. So, yeah, I should activate my rook, and then worry about taking the knight sometime. If the knight tries to escape, I can take this pawn. Um, if this pawn advances, then we take the knight, and there's no fork. There's no... Bishop drop here. Um, meanwhile, I'm still threatening this. And if I can get this rook to move away, I could take this pawn. But um, that's one possibility. It's sad that like my knight's in the way, so I can't bring my silver to defend the rook. It's also sad that I don't see a way to like. Oh. Was I greedy here? That's a good question. Um... Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Taking the knight seems okay. Even though it allowed this, and then I reacted impulsively. If I had more time to think, I'd maybe. If I had a lot more time to think, I'd probably find a better square for the rook. Uh, or I'd consider this block, like with a knight or a lance. Uh, I'd rather, the lance block looks really interesting, actually. Um, because I still have this knight drop. So, like. Yeah, this looks interesting. I mean, yes, the lance is kind of doomed up here, but this night drop looks strong. I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah, what's our comment right now, I wonder? Yeah, well, I mean, I've fallen for forks before. There's so much going on in this game. There really is. It's hard to keep track of it all. Um, Yeah, this pawn drop 5-5. Five, five. Uh, I was slightly relieved to see this, because this means pawn drop 5-7 is no longer possible. Uh, the vanguard pawn in the opening is very strong, because it splits the board on this diagonal with the bishops are both on. At this point, neither bishop's on that diagonal, so it's just assuming a little bit of space, but pawn 5-5 five five in general is much stronger than it is right now. Um, so here... This does claim space, but it also prevents you from dropping a pawn here in the future. If somehow you did get a knight, and the knight combined with the pawn, or if you get a silver and the silver combined with the pawn or something, like, drops over here could try to break the side of my castle. But, yeah. Yeah. So at this point, yeah, you're just in pain. Uh, it's... We won't dwell too much over this, because it would have been hard to find another way out. Uh, so yeah, the first... Um, how much of this game would I say? Yeah, these first 38 moves or so, up to about this point, this seemed very challenging, very accurate. Uh, the only thing that was maybe somewhat out of line... Well, was one... Um, undefending 
So you have a loose scold, you have a loose bishop, a loose rook. So you're asking for a fight when you have so many loose pieces. And I bring a fight. And then you're saying, oh wait, no, I changed my mind. And I'm like, nope, too late, we're going to fight. So I think until that point, um, yeah, these first 20 moves or so have been pretty reasonable. And everything up to move 40, um, aside from that one situation there, yeah, you're doing the best you can to activate your pieces despite like facing some seriously adverse stuff here. Um, where I'm forcing you to react to what I'm doing. And you're reacting properly, it's just... Um, yeah, you forced me to bring a fight, so I brought one. And um, you're reacting as well as you can here. And, I mean, yeah, here you clearly have to defend somehow. It's hard to defend, but... Um, it all comes down to, can I win from this position? If this is winning for Gota, then um, then taking this token might not be the right move. Uh, like, you have an alternative that could defend this if you had to defend it. But maybe you also have some very strong counterattack somewhere, because, like, I have a loose piece, I have a loose piece. If the silver drops, then this is loose. Um, my king is kind of exposed over here. Uh, so, like, yeah, this is super sharp stuff. Um, so, yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, I don't know what more to say. Uh, but yeah, you're right that, like, once you get in time pressure, the facepalm moments become obvious, and I just had to calm down a bit, um, so now, yeah, you're de properly defending. That's a good shape. Like, this defends this, this defends that. These both defend each other. That's a nice shape. Um, it's just, at this point, I have overwhelming material advantage. So I can, at my leisure, break things up and promote. And you reacted as best as you could, but ultimately you ended up here. And it was just too much. So... It happens. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind, I, I don't want to fight. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> yeah, you're playing Central Foul Rook. You pick a fight, we're not going back. Fighting's gonna happen. So, uh, yeah. There were just a few slow moves, and then... Once you have slow moves with Central Foul Rook, um, I mean, it happens in general in the end game. It's just that Central Foul Rook tends to lend itself to end games very quickly. Um, so, as opposed to a slow maneuvering game where there's lots of subtlety, and no, there's not much subtlety here. You just have to read stuff out properly, and um, it's hard to read everything because we're playing with a game clock. So, yeah. Yeah, glad to help out. Uh, thanks, Sir Game Robert. Yeah. Um, yeah, in terms of, like, practical advice, because, like, we all suffer reading and time pressure, um, and it's just hard to learn that. But I guess the practical advice is, like, if you're picking a fight, make sure you're ready for it. So, like, yeah. They they tell you don't have loose pieces, and the reason strong players tell you this is because like this is something you're able to watch out for, and you can say well, but I have a really strong attack, and then the strong player is like actually yeah loose pieces are fine just make sure you know what you're doing but um turns out in this case yeah neither of us knew what we were doing and I just accidentally prevailed which uh, good for me but um, yeah uh, sharp stuff so either I don't know read more carefully have good clear targets in mind like with the Mino the base here uh, the ear of this castle over there are nice targets. 
Um, if the targets are not so clear, just make sure you're using all of your pieces. Um, I did manage to bring out most of my pieces for this. I was not happy when I brought my knight out. Um, I was really struggling to read this position. But I thought I needed the silver back here to protect against possible bishop drops, so I trapped my silver. I was not happy with this. There's undoubtedly some better shape that was available somehow. I just couldn't find it. But yeah, make sure that... Yeah, you've adequately defended against a lot of drops. Your generals are protecting everything. Your pieces are sitting here in the corner, preventing me from using these squares to drop pieces. So um, it's good against drops. It's just at some point... Um, yeah, I managed to gradually get my pieces out, and, um, yeah, the silver drop, or silver move does bring your silver out, but then you brought the silver back, and at this point, my attack is just much too fast, so, yeah, the, uh, I guess general advice, play solid shapes, or if you're not playing solid shapes, uh, have your pieces active, um, because you're gonna need a very rapid attack if you're gonna prevail I guess. I don't know. Yeah, sorry I don't have better general advice. But you know who does? Uh, Shogi Harbor. So we're going to pay some attention uh, as she plays her games with Paul and as she does Shogi Sunday. So hope you all enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.